the one store that I recommend everyone checks out. It was half 12 on a Saturday night. Yeah. No one expects to make any money. And then you bang a grand. What was like the biggest struggle that you had on the way up? I watched myself get into like a fucked up situation mm -hmm. and I didn't know what to do. Amazon Arbitrage. Have you heard of it? This might be one of the fastest ways to make money online this year. And today I've got someone that's made seven figures. Not only have they made seven figures, but they also have a piece of software that can help you do the same. But I'll let him introduce himself. Okay, thanks for having me on, mate. So I'm Jack. Um, I own a business called Aftermarket Arbitrage. Um, we also do a lot of other stuff as well. So we run a podcast. So it's been, it's good to finally be on this yeah, side of the camera yeah. again um, and share a bit more of my story about yeah, what we yeah, do. Yeah. Because yeah. for me, I just sort of take your position and interview everyone else. But I want to <laughs> yeah. I want to give it back. Be on the other bit. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. thanks for coming down. I know it's no, a long no. journey. So... We're in Canary Wolf, we've come all the way down from Manchester, so yeah. appreciated, well, man. No, it's an excuse for a night out as well, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Some nice dinner. <laughs> well, are you going to go out later if you've got any um, We've ideas? got, yeah, we've got um, Summer Sand Twiga Butt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, good. yeah. And then staying somewhere in Mayfair, I'm not sure. Yeah, she's got to go. Spending some good money today, yeah. <laughs> yeah <hopefully. laughs> so I want to dive straight into what is Amazon Arbitrage, if people don't know. So basically, the whole concept, um, the, the, are we going to, should we run through FBA? Or, yeah, let's start yeah. right at the beginning. Okay. Yeah. So what we do is um, an FBA is a concept, super, super simple. Mm -hmm. And it's basically going to involve you the way we do it. So it's via online or retail arbitrage. So mm -hmm. what that means is us finding products that may be deeply discounted or it may just be that an item carries a natural premium on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Now, what we can do is buy it from a retailer, um, either in store or online, take it home, label it up box it up, send it to Amazon's warehouse, mm -hmm. get it listed on their website. Mm -hmm. Once it's sold, Amazon distributes it to the buyers. So the process for us is mm -hmm. sourcing products, getting it into Amazon's warehouse, yeah. and then letting them distribute it to the actual buyers. So a lot of people confuse it with drop shipping. It's, Definitely not drop shipping. It's different, isn't the, it? Yeah. The, and this, we get it all the time Literally. because we have you have to label your own products and stuff like that. So they, the, the, the way that you could drop ship it in a sense is if you sent it to a prep center yeah. and then you had another team do it for you. Yeah. But still, someone has to touch it in the middle mm -hmm. to just to label it, to get it into Amazon's warehouse. So it's nothing like drop shipping. Yeah, completely different. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's FBA. Yeah. What is the arbitrage bit of it? So arbitrage is just the whole, the whole side of it. Okay. So arbitrage is essentially just making money arbitraging between the, the price differentials between the retail from a, a store and then yeah. the the retail we can sell it out on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the there's various ways. So there's FBA, mm -hmm. that's where you send it into Amazon. Mm -hmm. There's FBM, and um, that's fulfilled by merchant. So that's basically where we're going to do all the shipping and handling ourselves. You save on fees, but it's a headache if you want to scale because if you're selling 100 products a day, like I don't want to be putting 100 different products in 100 different boxes to 100 different addresses. Yeah, I'll impossible. let Amazon deal with that. Yeah. yeah, And that's why Amazon's like a beautiful business model to scale because you can put hundreds of items in one big box, mm -hmm. send it in and let them deal with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mentioned it a few times on the, on the podcast actually that I used to do, I sold yoga mats on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. And um, obviously really small. I think I made like maybe a K a month. Or Was it private like label? Yeah, private label from China. Yep. Mate, it was crazy because I'd wake up in the morning. Obviously, it's, it's a lot of work to get it to FBA yeah, yeah, yeah. to promote it. But once it's there and it's selling, it's amazing. Like, you wake up, 30 orders in. Yep. How much have I made? Like, you're doing the numbers. Yeah, yeah. It's almost feels like passive income. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's crazy. That's it. And that's, the, that's the, the, the good thing about it is, yeah, like, there, there is that, that work element to it. Don't get me wrong. You do have to put some legwork in. And if you're lazy, you're not going to be successful with it. Yeah, yeah. But when you're on your weekends and you see the seeing the money flowing in like it's yeah, a nice yeah. feeling yeah yeah it's mad um so in terms of like arbitrage so there's different types of arbitrage isn't there so there's online and offline so there's online and retail retail yeah, yeah. so do you want me to run through the process? Yeah, straight, yeah, yeah, straight yeah. from the beginning. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so resale arbitrage is the big one, the one that we, if you, you see our social pages, mm -hmm. our TikToks, like that, you'll see us out. Um, we was out doing it with Tom Skinner, Bosch yeah, guy. Yeah, I see yeah. Knows. <laughs> so, He's yeah. a legend, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a cool guy. Um, but yeah, so basically what that is, is we'll go into stores and we use a, a tool called Seller Amp SAS. Basically, 
what that is. It allows you to scan a barcode and then it will pull up all of the data yeah. that you could need um, to basically get insights around a product. So it will tell you, so you input the cost price, what you found at the store app. Yeah. It will then cross-reference that product to what it's selling at on Amazon. And then it, it'll tell you how many sales per month. Yeah. Um, it'll tell you return on investment, profit after fees, everything yeah, yeah, yeah. that you could need to build a picture onto whether to buy that product or not. And then realistically, because obviously you make it look super easy on your yep. on your content. But say I buy a product, mm -hmm. what is the process of getting that to Amazon? In terms, so if you let's say if you walked into a store today. Yeah, if I walked into a store today, what's the process from getting from there to selling it on Amazon? Okay, so it's, again, very simple. Yeah. You're going to take it home. You, if, at this point, you're already going to have, let's say you've already got an Amazon seller account. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're going to need to sell on the platform. You're going to go home. You're going to add that inventory. So that's basically going to look like you just saying, I've got 10 of this product, I've got five of this product, whatever it may be. Once you've uh, added your inventory, you create a shipment, yeah. Amazon will give you labels, mm -hmm. you print them off, run it through your normal printer, you don't need a fancy label printer, run it through there, stick them on, box them up, create a shipment with UPS, yeah, have yeah, UPS yeah. pick up from your front door, chill. That's mad, <laughs> that's crazy. So like, give me an example of a product that you just found in like a Sainsbury's or something and break down the numbers in terms of fees and what the profit was. So the, the, the fees is always going to be different depending on the, the category. Mm. So when, when you sell a ramp, it automatically does it for you. Um, but do you know any off head in terms of like the breakdown of fees versus the profit that you made? Um, Put you on the spot. It's going to be like, so I can give an example of some Morphe Richard products that we picked up. Yeah. So you may have seen them on our socials. So mm -hmm. basically our software notified us to these products. Um, we bought them at like £2.80 each. Um, they were selling on Amazon for around £70 and we walked away for around about £40, £30 to £40 of profit on each one. Wait, you bought it for £2.80 and yeah, selling it yeah. £70? Yeah, yeah. And that's the, so that's the software that we developed and that's why it's like, so basically what this software will do, it will um, track um, an API and what it will do is it will basically monitor Amazon for significant price decreases. Mm -hmm. So this could happen like the Morphe Richards case yeah. where they make a pricing error. Yeah. So if a pricing error happens, we can ex like jump on that straight away. Or and they have to sell it to you for that price. It's yeah, they can cancel it. Like more, some of the Morphe Richard stuff got cancelled, but a ton of it arrived, and that was the beauty of it. So but the um, I, mean, I would have just cleared out the whole. Like, yeah, the, yeah, people ordered hundreds of them in our group in the community. Like people made thousands in that night. It happened at like, half twelve at night, so no one expects it. Yeah, and that's yeah, the yeah. thing about like having access to stuff like this. Like mm. it can be half. It was half twelve on a Saturday night. Yeah. No one expects to make any money, and then you bang a grand. Mad. Like, yeah, it's like printing money. Yeah, yeah. it is. It is. <laughs> it's free money at that point. Like you spent. Like it's yeah, just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So we did. Um, so yeah, it, it basically I've attracted significant price decreases for like a price error, or it can be the Amazon price match a retailer. Mm -hmm. So we've had this happen before as well with like Tommy TP nappy dispensers, right? Dropped from uh, 88 pounds down to, um, I think it was 88 pounds down to nine pounds, I think it was. Mm -hmm. We um, cleared out the stock. When you clear out the inventory, so let's say Amazon have got hundred units in stock. Yeah. Our community will buy out all hundred. So let's say that that at uh, that price point, yeah. we buy it all out, yeah. then it shoots back up to the next high, uh, the next lowest seller, which yeah. is back up. So then we bought it out, it went up to £91. So then all of our members can sell it back at £91, oh. and then they made £60 profit on everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's £60 yeah. after fees as well, guys. So that, yeah. that was like the, with that product in that category, they bought it for like, what, eight, nine pounds sold it for 91 and then took home £60 profit. Mate. I mean, it sounds like easy money. Like. Yeah, yeah. And that's it, but it's just being aware of these opportunities. And that's the thing. It's like, mm. You can do it on your own, but like, and by, by all means, there's a lot of people that do FBA just sourced yeah. on their own, but this is where the benefit of doing it with someone like us is because yeah, yeah. not many, you can't just have that software. Mm -hmm. We've built it yeah. and it's it's to our sort of custom um, parameters yeah, yeah, yeah. and we, we've we worked hard on it and we've mastered it. Yeah, it's crazy because, um, so I used to do eBay to Amazon arbitrage, which was mm -hmm. really slick in terms of the system that we set up in terms of, we'd buy it from eBay, set it on Amazon. And the other way around as well. But it was so hard to find the deals. So I was spending every day, like four hours a day, trying to find the deals. And that was the longest bit. So if I had a piece of software that could do it for me, exactly. I would take that yeah, tomorrow. Exactly. And that's it. Like the, you, we, you always get the people that complain like, oh, I could do this on YouTube. I can do this myself. But it's like, yes, you can. But it's like, if you want that sort of, if you value your time, mm. let let my team do the work. Yeah. And because they're, they're the experts in the field. And then yeah, you just yeah, take, yeah. you just use it yeah because i think the thing of arbitrage as well is that people think you know i don't want to just have another job where i'm outside mm -hmm. chasing deals all the time so how do you make it scalable in terms of you find the products do you have to go to the stores every single time or so you can do it depends what 
what you want to do. We we've got a guy, one of who we who now works for me. Um, he does mainly retail arbitrage, and he did. He was like, so he started. I think in seven months he did started doing five grand a profit, and then he did. So he went five grand a profit, seven and a half grand, nine grand, eleven grand, and then he, he did eleven grand in December profit. Um, and yeah, yeah, and that was he, like he don't not been going at it even a year. Right, this is sounding interesting. And he started. We started it. with two point five k, so he started with five hundred pounds. Okay, proved the concept to himself. Once he's seen it worked, put the other two grand in. Yeah, yeah went yeah. from there. And then, in terms of the time needed to hit that ten k mark or eleven k, how many hours a day does he spend? So he went. Um, so he, this was always a side hustle for him until okay. he hit the five grand profit mark. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when he was earning five grand a month, mm-hmm. he then um, quit the nine to five, went into it. So he, but I know now, like he probably works like probably like four days a week full time let's say four days nine to five mm-hmm. um but he's super flexible and it's what the, the lifestyle creates for you like i know yeah, like yeah, yeah. whenever i ring him up say oh should we go film some content he's yeah. like yeah just can drop whatever he's doing and just do it because yeah. like he's that flexible and that's what having something like this allows you to he do. owns his own time isn't yeah it? and and, yeah. and that's like invaluable yeah so you're doing four mm-hmm. days a week to make three yeah. or four times what you'd earn at a normal yeah job. we've got we've got other guys as well like one of my best mates he um he's been at it in his third month um he did four and a half grand profit and he he's like does does probably like three to four hours a day yeah, yeah, yeah. um like yeah. not not a lot yeah it's mad and then you think about like obviously now like times are really hard so people's people's salaries aren't stretching like they used to like I bills are going up rent's going up you could even start this on the side to make an extra two grand to cover the mortgage yeah. or to cover your bills. exactly and this is this is the thing it's that any pretty much any traditional nine to five, there is no way that they're going to increase your salary at the rate that having a side hustle like Amazon yeah. will allow you to do. Yeah. How could you in, so, like another guy who we had, we had on our podcast who does Amazon, um, he went from starting with 500 pounds and then uh, he started 500 pounds last January. This January alone, he did 15 grand a profit. So where, what? In one month. Yeah, yeah. So what job is going to allow you to get to a point where you've gone from nothing mm. to earning 15 grand profit a month yeah. within a year? Yeah. Uh, extra. So you're not going to get a price increase like a 15 grand a month extra. It's like mad. we're not even saying 15 grand a year. It's like crazy. that would be a big salary increase, like 15 yeah, yeah, grand a year. Yeah, yeah. But no, no, no. We're talking a month. So like what's that? Like what's that 15, like 100 and 180K a year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, after tax? No, that would be before tax. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So tax would be like what, 20% on that or something. It depends how he wants to. Yeah, there'll yeah. be twenty. There'll be corporation tax, but then it'll be depend how he pulls. Because I was just out. saying, like six figures is around. I think five k after tax, and that's mm-hmm. a lot of people's end game. Yeah, yeah. You could make two, three times that doing arbitrage. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's mad. And I think once you start to get like that's the thing is, people. A lot of people um, see six figures as like insanely successful in today's society, mm-hmm. but you can stretch yourself so much further than that yeah. and once you get to that figure you'll realize that mm, this isn't actually like i'm still not where i want to be yeah, still can't yeah, live yeah. the lifestyle i want yeah 5k like you yeah you're comfortable but yeah. you're not like you can't be sort of you can't do everything you want you can't like you, you probably are going to be you're going to have to turn stuff down like i don't i wouldn't want to be restricted to that Mate, that wouldn't be my end goal i've because obviously i live in london i've done the numbers and i need 16k a month to be really comfortable, to help my parents out, yep. to help my family, I need 16K. Nice. A, f- a flat's going to set me back 2.5K. Yep. Then my car might be another K on top of that. Yep. Then you've got your food, you've got expenses, you've got your you're helping out your parents. Yep. 5K will not stretch. So you need to do extra things, I think, to really yeah. have a comfortable life. Yeah, for sure. And I don't, I, I, for me, it's, I struggle to understand the, I, but I've always said I, something that in a way, I'm sort of maybe a little bit jealous that people can be in the nine to five and just be mm. happy. Yeah. yeah and like yeah. be satisfied with that. Yeah. Because the amount of like stress and pressure I'll put on myself to be achieving more yeah. every single day. Yeah. Like, whereas I wish I could just be in a nine to five, like switched off. Yeah. Like yeah, just yeah. like, yeah. um, really just co- going through the motion yeah. and happy, <laughs> but I can't, I'll drive myself insane. Yeah, and yeah. that's why like we do everything we do and we take every opportunity we can, like yeah, me, yeah, like yeah. who I work with and we, we just, Try and make as much as I can. It's mad, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Well, they say that's the curse of the entrepreneur is that you're never really satisfied. Not for sure. Do you know what I mean? Uh, we, like, this is the thing. It's like, when when I, like, started Aftermarket, like, we had certain goals and stuff. And every time I hit that goal, mm. like, I was like, I I'd, I'd, I'd built it up in my head and was like, oh, this is going to be so good. Like, when we hit seven <laughs> yeah. figures. You can chill. Yeah, when we hit seven figures, like, all that happened, my brother come over, shook my hand, said, well done, proud of yourself, 
back to work. Back to work. Yeah, and yeah. it's like eight <laughs> figures because it's like, I, in my head, like I could never have dreamed of seven figures. Mm. So then it was, and then like, I was like, oh, I'm going to have this big celebration. And it's like, no, like 10 seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back to the desk. <laughs> so wait, th there must be like an end goal though. What is your end goal to make like, um, when you can say, all right, let me chill for a bit. Let me take the missus out and go travel for a year. No. I've got, I've not, I've not even got that like in my, my head. I just want to build and build and build and build. Yeah. Like I want to, I don't, I don't know is the honest answer. Okay. I want to take it as far as I can. Um, the, something that I like, the, the thing with me is that like something I'm really sort of passionate about is that I want to give everything mm. my all hundred percent because yeah. I think that, and I, this might be weird to some people, but I think it's truly selfish of me. If I don't do everything in my power right now, the, to make myself successful mm -hmm. because then if my kids in the future don't have the best start in life that is that's up to me yeah so i think it's selfish of me to be lazy selfish yeah, yeah, of me yeah. to not do the extra hour of work and i want to do everything i can to make sure that my family are looked after in the future mm -hmm. and if i don't do that then i'm not going to be happy with myself that's probably one of the ways that i'll seek fulfillment yeah, yeah is yeah. to ensure that i'm kept everyone happy everyone's looked after everyone's financial skill and even like generationally like your kids yeah kids. I, I, yeah i want generational wealth that's my goal yeah. the yeah. end goal is generational wealth um that, that there's i seen like a clip um and it so, so have you ever watched succession no I right need to watch it. so anyone's watched succession it's about a billionaire family and they've got a certain intro song right mm. and um the this for some reason i've seen this clip on instagram and it really hit home someone had just put the intro song like over a video of like a granddad walking with his granddaughter like probably like two, three years old, yeah, yeah, to a yeah. private jet. Yeah. His son's in front of him as well. Like, And it was like, fuck, like, that is what I want. That was like one of those things that's like, <laughs> that is what I need. Um, it's, that's that, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I want, like, everyone taken care of. That's my goal. Yeah, man. But that should be everyone's goal. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. But yeah. you, you, we see it all the time where people, some people don't care. Yeah, yeah, it's mad. So at the point, so how much are you making a month now, if you can share? So, what I can tell you is, so I actually did the numbers on this for the first time. Yeah. Um, I've never really worked it out because the way that I, I basically pay myself sort of what I want every month. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of like lifestyle. Mm. So if I'm going to hold it that month, I'll pay myself whatever I need to pay myself. Yeah. Um, but I don't take a set salary. Mm -hmm. I just live. You just reinvest it into the business. Yes. So yeah. I keep as much in. But this month um, mm. we did... I sat down just before this after reading the question and I thought, right, I'm going to have a look. <laughs> uh, so it's not, it's not going to be as high as many as probably the other guests that you've had on, but we, it came out to just what I could in theory have paid myself this month. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Came to 48,400. Flipping out. You've made it. That's it. <laughs> that's Complete not made it. The mission. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. That's crazy. Okay. So what I want to do now is go through the story of yep. how you started. Yeah. So what was your life like before you started? Yep. Because you're still a young guy. How old are you? Uh, 25. 25. Still a young guy. Yeah. But before, what was life like? Previous jobs? Yep. So when I... The, the, the whole probably desire for more started for me when I was probably like 16. Mm. So I went to a... Um, my dad... The place where my dad works at. Like he's... My dad works in sales, but they have like a factory there, right? And it's a chemical plant. Yeah. And what... They basically got me a summer job. Mm. And it was just filling up chemical bottles, um, putting a label on them, screwing a lid on. That's rinse it. and repeat simple for a summer <laughs> right but that is so mind numbing yeah, yeah and like by the end of the summer like i was getting um five pound an hour yeah yeah and like i was buzzing like but i was just buzzing oh you happy with five pound an hour yeah that point, that point yeah because I that was my first ever job i didn't have really like a contact to well like, how old are you i was like 15 16 all oh, right yeah yeah, yeah 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 so um i did that and it was sort of like probably even a few weeks in like yeah. i was like how the fuck are these i mean i swear yeah, 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 I was like, how the fuck? And like these guys that are here, like doing this every day, yeah. and th those guys, like this is ten years on now, probably they're still there, just doing the same job every day. Right. And this is that's that thing where I go back to. I don't understand how people are that switched off to just go through the motions yeah, every yeah. day and be mm. satisfied with that because literally, I was driving myself insane, like doing the exact the same monotonous tasks Crazy. over and over and over. It's yeah, like, yeah, what yeah. the fuck, mate? Because <laughs> I used to work. My first job was at Sainsbury's, like yeah. um, when I was about sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, yeah. The guy I was working on my aisle was about. I think maybe 40. Yeah, he'd yeah. been doing it 15 years. And he used to do the night shift with me. So we're doing from 10 to 7. Then he'd go straight into working to that corner shop for another eight hours. So he used to get four hours sleep and he was working almost the rest of the time, yeah, yeah. nonstop. And he was happy doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, mate, do something so, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's the thing where it comes down to, yeah, you can be a workhorse, yeah. but that doesn't mean that like, 
you, you, that's not something to be necessarily be proud of. No. Like if you can be way more effective and efficient with your time yeah, and, yeah. and do something that generates way more money than, yeah, yeah. than that sort of position. And as you said, you can spend time with the ones you care about. And, exactly. You know and that's I mean? where the, the, the benefits of it are. So, yeah, yeah so we did that. Um, and then by, it was at that point I was like, well, this sort of job can never be for me. Um, then I went to college, hated college. That was where I, I was quite, well, quite clever in high school, like mm -hmm. A's, A stars. Yeah. Then uh, college just hated it. Um, oh, did you flop the exam? No, no, I passed. I got uh, A, B, C. That's all right. But yeah. I was, I, for me, like, I was in, like because of what I was like in high school, yeah, yeah, I yeah. always set really high expectations of myself. Um, but yeah, hated college. And then I took a year out because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Yeah. Worked in the gym. So um, literally used to like this. So this is like part of my story as well, because it comes quite important later. So I used to compete in natural bodybuilding. Um, and that was like really fucking, that was like my life at one point. That's Mate, all I wanted to do. I'd love to do yeah. that. You know, All I wanted to do was be a bodybuilder. Yeah. Um, so you're quite big. I was, yeah, yeah. And it taught me like so much like in terms of discipline. Yeah. Like it was, what I would put myself like through mentally and stuff was horrific, but that led to issues later down the line, which okay. we'll touch on later. Okay. Sorry. So, yeah, so um, did that, and then I was desperate to get back into education. Um, went to uni. So you were about what, 19 then? Or... Yeah, 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 we'll think of 19. 19. Yeah. Okay. And then picked my degree by um, basically looking at which one looked fanciest. <laughs> so I was just like, which one sounds the best? You do engineering? But, no, 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 no. So okay. I was in, in the business realm. Business. So, so I went uh, for accounting, business finance, management. So I was just like, right, this one sounds like it's got a lot on it. <laughs> Pick that. Um, and then... It's like an all-in-one course. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did that. And then, so I was always very fixed, fixated on becoming an investment banker. That was always my my goal. Um, until um, sort of I went, did, did a few internships, interned at Hedge Fund. Mm -hmm. So this is where everything changed up for me because I was on a very, very structured path. And then leaving to go like sort of this entrepreneurial side was like, really like a big stepping stone. So I got um, basically offered a job at Hedge Fund. So I entered there twice. Then basically what they said to me was, go away, get a first in your degree, um, then get three years experience in M&A, mm -hmm. and then you've got a job here. Yeah. Um, so that was my goal. That was all I worked for. Like final year of uni, I went out once. Like I didn't go out, wasn't social, work, work, work. I want a first. And that was where again, like probably the bodybuilding stuff comes in because it was like super disciplined. I don't care and focus on my goal, that's it. Yeah. Um, and and so then I did that, got my first, got my job in M and A, um, but then in between the summer, um, so I did um, an internship at do you know M and G, uh, asset management. Uh, yeah, I think I had yeah. It. So I did um, an internship as I graduated university. I did I started an internship at M and G, and then I had a two week window between that and actually started my graduate role in M and A. Yeah. In that two week window, started the company. And then, um, and the funny thing is as well, so when I went, the reason I, the main reason that I actually got my job in M&A mm -hmm. was in the partner interview, like, he was like, what's reselling? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, Oh, well, I forgot to actually touch on the reselling side here. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah <laughs> fuck. So, so he's like, what's reselling? And, um, it's like, at that point, like, that was the thing that made me stand out. Yeah. He said to, he said to me though, in the, in the interview, yeah, yeah. why haven't you started a business with this? And then 12 months later, I came up to him and went, do you remember that interview? <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he went, he's like, fuck, I planted the seed, oh. didn't I? <laughs> but yeah, so basically going back to that. Anyway, when I was at the gym, yeah. started reselling. Now, what did I start with? Yeezys. So um, got a pair of Yeezys, made 400 quid profit on them. It's when they just started taking off. Pirate Blacks, yep. Pirate Black 350s. Now, this is where like I really, really believe in like the ripple effect because, okay. uh, butterfly effect, whatever you want to call it. So I um, didn't have any money in my bank. Like I had nothing. At this point, bro. Yeah, uh, <laughs> working at the gym, like um, I had nothing in my bank, so I got through the queue. Didn't expect to get through the queue for the Yeezys, mm -hmm. and then how long were you queuing up for it? Literally like five minutes. But oh. I knew people were in there for hours, and so no, that's why I was like, "Fuck!" Like, what the fuck do I do now? <laughs> I managed to get them, uh, got them in my basket. Now this is where, like, for me, it's like this is the thing I actually deep a lot yeah. because I tried to get one size, it sold out. Tried, went for another size, and then. Um, at that point, when I tried to pay, I realized I had no money in my bank. So then I had to go through the checkout process again. Now, anyone who knew, knows Yeezys would know how quick they would go. So then what I had to do was I had to ring my mum. My mum was in Spain at the time, so she didn't answer like twice. She rang me back. Then, so I got a card details, put them in, check out. 
was like, she, yeah, she don't like, why are you calling me to buy yeah, trainers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was, she was like, yo, you're going to have to give me this money back. Yeah. Uh, but I was just like, mom, just give me the fucking just money. Trust yeah, me. yeah, trust me. Yeah. I'm going to make money on these. So then that happened. Um, and then I was like, buzzing, transactions gone through. And then it came up with, you know, like 3D security. Yeah, yeah. So it was like another hurdle. So I had to ring her back again, put the code in. It's like, there's so many little things that could have gone wrong yeah, yeah. in that transaction. Yeah. And if that transaction didn't go through, I would not be sat here today. Seriously. Like, yeah, because that's when you think about it, that started everything for me yeah, that changed yeah, yeah. everything yeah. and that's how I got into the game it was yeah. that uh, that one pair and like when you actually think of it like that I wouldn't have anything like like uh, that's what I think like that so many things could have gone wrong with that transaction yeah, yeah, yeah. but it didn't and it, and it led to today and that's where like one of the biggest things that I push on as well is with people taking action mm -hmm. and sort of making one small change every day yeah, because yeah. you don't know what that one small change is going to lead to like for yeah. me that one small thing of actually logging onto a computer yeah. trying to buy a pair of shoes yeah. led to me being sat here having a seven figure business yeah and having shareholders in multiple six figure businesses Mad. like that's a, from one thing yeah and that's where like people like don't think you've got to go balls the wall and get like make 100k in your first month you don't have to do that just make Man. a start yeah yeah yeah. Um, and i always feel like the universe kind of shifts around you so mm -hmm. if you push the universe will move out of your way so, so to get you yeezys is like super hard i mm -hmm. tried for years, I could never get them. Yeah, yeah. that's probably because of people like me. Yeah, <laughs> and people have bots as well. Yeah, so that's they? what we did. That's how. That's where. Like, what yeah. I'm gonna do is, I will. Um, so yeah, started with that pair. Thought right, found out about this group on Twitter. Yeah. Um, in the US, mm -hmm. and they were called it like a cook group. Mm -hmm. Now this was the original cook group, and cook cook. Okay. So cook. They used to say right, we're all chefs. All oh, right. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're all just like clearing out the stock. All right. right. Yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. that was what that was what it was called. Yeah. So we, um, from there, so it was called One Stop Cop and it was pretty much the original group. That's a sick name, One yeah. Stop Cop. Now the guy, and what's really funny is the guy that actually founded that, all, pretty much everyone who was in One Stop Cop, they all left, like when it, when it disbanded, pretty much the majority of them all started up their own groups. Mm. So this one guy who started this, actually from him, built a network of people that have probably done like, that, well, no, it probably probably like in hundreds of millions from from trainers just from him yeah, and like in business. Like, and he, he, he's he's left the game now, he's a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and he probably won't even know. It's I've got mad. him on LinkedIn, I'd, I'd need to hit him up and be like, this is what you've done. Yeah, thank you yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. I was going to add in just there as well, like it's so important to have a community around you. Yeah, yeah for sure. Because you probably would have given up if you didn't yeah, have that exactly. network. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. and that's that's it. Like being in that group, I paid for that membership, mm. and what did that do for me? So, how much did you pay for it? You... It was, I think, it was like eighty eighty dollars a month. Was that like money to you back then, or was it? Quite... No, that was a lot of money. Yeah. I split it with one of my friends. Like, is it where we split it? Because <laughs> that was like when we first started. We didn't, and we was like, "Oh, this is risky." This, like, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. But then it was the best decision we've made because we then found out how to acquire more of these trainers. Yeah, yeah. And what I'll do is, so I'll send you some photos. You can pop them up on screen. Yeah. Big bulk orders of this is like the the size the operation's got to. We'd um, export them all to China. Like we're talking hundreds and hundreds of pairs. Um, it was it, it just and it all started from that one. Now it was all trainers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then so but then so this is what like how the trainer side of stuff grew that's all i was doing throughout uni like i was paying um i was paying like my flatmates like 250 quid each to help me secure a train so like there was a certain drop right you we were in york that's where i studied yeah you had to spoof you look it was for adidas com adidas confirmed i think it was called mm. um so now you had to be in London. It was the semi-frozen yellows. Stock was super low. Yeah. You had to be in London yeah. and you had to select an image. Um, so it basically would be like, it would come up, you know, like... Um, I think I did this. Yeah, so it would come up and say like, yeah. select the image of the man walking the dog, whatever yeah, it would yeah, be, yeah. right? Mm. So I knew what the image was early. I, we had it leaked and I would spoof the location of my flatmates' phones to put them in London. Yeah. So then they'd all know what the photo is. So I'd be like, <laughs> as soon as that... As soon as... Um, the pace changes, just click that image, don't even think, don't look. Yeah, yeah. So then there was, the stock was super low and yeah. I got eight pairs and th then managed to sell it, like Mate, paid them 250 is... quid each and then made a, a ton, ton, nice margin myself. Do you know what? This is why, because I tried this loads of times, yeah. yeah. I was trying to do it manually and I was thinking, how are people doing it that yeah, quickly? Yeah, yeah. Like, I would never get through. Yeah, we had the photos leaked. <laughs> <It's mad. laughs> and that's the thing, that, but that's what came from the community and that's yeah, what yeah. came from knowing people and sort of just jumping in day one. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And with no expectations, just... Yeah, just wanting to make more money. It's mad, and I think um I think Mr Beast was talking about when he was first starting his YouTube. He had like a group of maybe like fifty people that were all starting at the same time. Yep. They were all individually making their own mistakes, but they had the aggregate learnings, mm -hmm. so they were able to propel themselves so much faster because they had the community. Where exactly. he made this mistake, you don't need to make the same mistake. Exactly. So it's so important to have the community. Exactly, and it's even like like um so the the guys that uh, we mentioned before. So my my biggest competitor. They're actually like some of my best mates. 
And so the thing is, they started the business before me. But when, so when I um, was like, was going through shit phases, like they were always there and they were like, nah, chill, you're going to be fine. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. And like, it's, it's just that sounding board of people around you, knowing that you've got a good network of mm. people that you can rely on. Yeah. Because when shit hits the fan, you don't want other, everyone around you to be like, "Oh my god, what are you gonna yeah. do?" Like, no, 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 you don't want that. You want everyone who's around you to be yeah, like, yeah. "Right, action. What do yeah. we do? Yeah, we'll salt it." Yeah, it's and true. So that's what that's what you need to find and foster. Um, yeah, because so, so, I feel like the life of an entrepreneur is quite a solitary one. It can be for sure. Like, there's not really immediate help there unless you go out and find the people. So you need that community mm-hmm. to keep you going. You know, when it, things are flopping. Who's gonna pick you up? Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's so important. There's um, and that, that that that's completely true. And the sort of yeah. So if we go back to the the journey, so in that two week window, mm-hmm. decided I was gonna start the company. Didn't tell anyone. Yeah. And then like my mum, uh, like was like got a letter from company's house, like at the front door. She's like, "What's aftermarket arbitrage?" <laughs> Like, cause I didn't know stuff came through the post. I didn't know that that would happen. Um, and that must have sounded like Chinese to her. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell? What is it? Yeah, these yeah. words put together. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, uh, yeah, was plowed through, set yeah. it up, and then put like an elaborate marketing scheme together. And I was like, right, day one, I'm going to smash it. We we went into like beta for like maybe a month, ready for day one launch, and we partnered with this guy called Food Review Club. We still work with him today. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. he's super he's smashing it he's like really good and we put a put marketing plan together with him i was like yes right we're gonna fly and we made 25 pound we got one sale and yeah. and i was like so this is the thing i would I, and it was my brother's birthday meal that day so you started with the trainers or with what so i started all trainers mm-hmm. but then i started my own business after market so okay. this was teaching people how to get trainers like i was doing what was the first sale the f- first 25 pound yeah what product no that's for uh, so when I'm talking about that now is with aftermarket arbitrage. So that was the first person to sign up. Got it. For, yeah, for yeah. me to teach. Okay. So twenty five pound, and I was expecting like probably like fifty, sixty, seventy people. So we got one. <laughs> yeah. We got one person, and yeah. I completely underestimated how hard it was going to be to acquire people. Um, now I got one. My brother's birthday, and I was sat at the dinner like with his face like slapped ass. Like, oh. <laughs> I was like, my mum was like, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. And so my oh, mum was supporting you. Yeah, yeah, That's super good. supportive, yeah. super supportive. Because like, a lot of parents wouldn't. They'd be like, get go back to work. Yeah, like, what nah. you super supportive. So I did that um, and carried on. And it just got to, we. I think it got to around about December. And this is like another important point as well. Um, so yeah, it came up to about December. And again, so I was out with one of my competitors for dinner. And I said to him, like, bro, it's getting hard this. I don't know if it's worth me carrying on, like, because I'm working now as well and I'm studying to be a chartered accountant. Like, my plate my, my plate was stacking up. Um, and I was like, I don't know if I can carry on doing this, like, because it's just not seen it. And he was like, bro, every, all the foundations set, you're on the cusp. January hits. So literally, this was probably like a week after. And he, and he was like, trust me, trust me, trust me, you're going to blow up. January hits, 800 sign-ups in a month, which equates to what? 800 times 25. No, that's, that's a lot of money. A lot I'm going to try yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But out of nowhere. What, and that, so, but how did you get those eight hundred though? How it was it was essentially just the the main driver of it came from actually like food review club. So in the first like let's say three four months of working with him, people just seen us as an advertiser. But because he was building his relationship up with us, people were seeing us as a frequent thing. People started to buy into it, and, and they were he like, had an oh, audience. Yeah, well. yeah, he's got a big audience. Okay. So then people were like, "Fucking hell!" Like. Like I actually trust this now, yeah. And it came out of nowhere, yeah. And it was just as we went. Was it the second lockdown? When did the second lockdown hit? I, don't know, I think it was around that 21? time. Yeah, the, around the second lockdown is when we blew up like properly, and we we that was when we we went up to thirty. We 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 basically went up to thirty seven k monthly recurring revenue like in no time. But then plateaued for probably eighteen months. Like really struggled. Um, so you went down, or you stayed at the thirty seven. Pretty much. So we went. I quit when I quit my nine to five. So I worked a year in that. Quit the nine to five, and then um, we went to forty one after I left. But then we dropped down to twenty eight, and this was essentially me just being a fuck up. Like, <laughs> just my priority shifted. I was too focused on going out, enjoying myself, and like I, I, I did. Like I, I messed up, but. I turned it around and I realized what else we had to do because we weren't, I was like 
really, really introverted. Yeah, yeah. Didn't want to be on camera. Yeah. Didn't want anything to do with it. Like I would, this would have been my worst nightmare at one point. Same for yeah, me, yeah. you know? And yeah. that's it. But it was like, right, my company's dying. Yeah. Do I do I let it die or do I make myself uncomfortable? Single swim. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> yeah. what do you do? Like the, the best the best sort of um actions as an entrepreneur will come out when your back's against the wall and you've yeah. got to come out fighting. Yeah. So then you because then that's what you've got to do, isn't it? Like and it's so I um then obviously got in front of the camera and then we changed it around. So now we're sitting at um fifty K a month um mm -hmm. with that business. I've got my hands in several of the pies mm -hmm. that we're touching like a good amount per year. Crazy. So we're, we're probably across the mall, we're probably at six figures a month. So there's a couple of gems in there. So let's yeah. just bring it back. So to get to the 800, you basically partnered with someone that had an audience that had the trust. Yeah. Because that's what stops people from so buying, right? this is what as well, everyone said to me like, this doesn't make sense, right? Mm. Why have you partnered with someone who does food? Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Let's think about it. What, this is the way I looked at it. So people that um, are watching food reviews, right? They've obviously got an interest in something that requires disposable income. Mm -hmm. And also, they're sat on Facebook, YouTube, watching this content, consuming yeah, it. Yeah, They've yeah. got spare time. Yeah. So for me, it was like you need you've got you enjoy an activity that you need disposable income for. You are also sat watching this a lot. You've got a lot of time. For me, it was okay. Those people will see the value in being able to make an extra two hundred pound a month, mm -hmm. an extra five hundred pound a month, yeah. an extra grand a month. Yeah. So everyone that I've ever spoke to was like. It doesn't make sense. Even when I was on the midnight pod, he was like, why did you do that? <laughs> yeah. But then I explained it, he was like, yeah, it's right. Like those people, their passion, what they want, they have yeah. to have money for it. Yeah, yeah. And if I can be that answer, mm. so so it means that they get their, their restaurant dinner or their takeaway for free yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah. because they're yeah. doing the side hustle. They don't feel the pain of payment anymore. Yeah, yeah. Then it would work, and it did, and it worked beautifully. That is like, crazy, and it yeah. was because it was just that outside the box thinking. It wasn't like I'm going Literally. to someone from Geordie Shaw and they're saying sign up. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Like I like try and make it more organic, foster a relationship with them because, like I said, it took like three to four months to actually pull it off. They at first no one was buying into it. Like I said, one sign up day one, and we were everywhere all over his feed. So it doesn't matter like that. That that's where like don't go bl like blowing money thinking you're going to be successful on day one. Yeah. For me, the biggest thing I've learned is like sort of cultivating that relationship and making sure that there is long longevity to everything. If you're just going to be in and out of a deal with someone, especially in this space, for me, I don't. It may be different in other spaces, but it just doesn't work. You've yeah, got yeah, to yeah. sort of have that constant positive reinforcement around your brand. Yeah. yeah. Because people don't trust. Uh, stuff like us mm -hmm. because of these forex traders the bullshit uh gurus yeah what i do is stained mm -hmm. and it's a struggle to acquire customers now yeah 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 especially after covid because of the the amount of stuff that happened with forex like the amount of forex scams the crypto scam yeah crypto everyone is just like nah making money online is a scam yeah and it's not yeah, yeah. like <laughs> there's people there's like there's i know for a fact that there's people in like we, I've, we, we've see, literally facilitated people leaving the nine to five. There's guys that I know, like some of my closest mates are doing like between 15 to 20K a month from Amazon. Like it's, there's, there's not bullshit. Like you just need to actually see what opportunities are around you yeah, and actually yeah. just take action. Yeah, yeah. Speaking as probably like one of your target audience, mm -hmm. I think the thing that stops people is, okay, they've made money, but they haven't showed us all the failures or like, it's not really true. Like, there's so many hurdles to get to that point. Like you might only just show the highlights. The people so that made money. when, when the, the thing is with Amazon and the way we do it with FBA, so private label, I don't touch it, never have done it, can't speak on experience from it. Yeah. So, but I know that private label carries way more risk than what we do. Now with what we do, the, with every sort of sticking point that you may face, mm -hmm. there's going to be a remedy for it. Yeah. You, there's, there isn't, there shouldn't be a failure unless for some reason you go out and buy a load of stock, list it at the wrong price and lose a load of money. If you follow the steps, it's yeah. a proven business model. Think of it like this, it has to work because Amazon uh, recently announced as well that they've not got enough FBA sellers. They've not got enough people on their platform yeah, yeah. to grow at the rate they wanna grow. Now, what does that mean? Amazon need us, what do they need? I mean, how do they attract us? We need to be able to make profit on the platform. Mm -hmm. If we couldn't make profit on Amazon, yeah. we wouldn't settle on Amazon. Amazon wouldn't be as big as it is because Amazon relies on people like us. A lot of people don't even know that, that Amazon don't own probably like 95% of the stock. Like it's sent yeah. in by people like us. Yeah. So if we can't make money, Amazon's got no stock. They can't make money on their fees. So Amazon always have to have an attractive offer for us. So when you think of that actual, like the overarching theme of that, 
and you think, yes, there may be something, there's going to be hurdles and stuff in between. Yeah, there's yeah. going to be little challenges. But at the end goal, you need to be able to make money on this. Yeah. Like, it's the the system is not broken. Yeah. You might you might hit a hurdle. You might buy you might buy too much of one item and it might be seasonal, so you might be stuck with it till next year. That's fine. But then you can do something about it. You can sell it on eBay, take it back to the retailer, or or just hold on to it. Yeah, there's yeah. it's there's little sorts of things, but we will help you navigate through it. Yeah. We're, <laughs> What's that? I don't know. Let's just continue. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, yeah. So, basically, Amazon, at the end of the day, for their platform to work, mm -hmm. they need us to be able to make profit. Yeah, yeah, and if you yeah. consider that as your sort of vision with it, mm -hmm. the business model must work. So, would you hit, like, say, like, Prime Day? Would you then... Would you just... <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep moving. Um, so say like Prime Day, yeah, yeah. when there's stupid discounts, would you then be online trying to look for deals or is um, that not a big thing for you? No, it can be. So that is, but the, so do you know when I mentioned the software that we built? Yeah. That's what that will do. Okay. So because that's basically pulling all of the, uh, it tracks every single product on Amazon's website. It okay. does it for us. Okay. So if there's any sort of arbitrage opportunities on Amazon, we call it Amazon to Amazon. Okay. That software picks it up. So okay. we don't have to do any manual work on that. Okay, cool. So for the audience, I've yep. got, say I've got 500 pounds, I've saved it up from working really hard for a month yep. or whatever. Talk me through the process of starting with you guys yep. and how much money I could realistically make in the first few months okay. if I put the time in. So this will, basically, anyone who's not on Discord, so we'll say starting with us, mm -hmm. sign up, Discord, get into the Discord. Yeah. Then what's that going to look like? What What's the first steps that you're going to have to do? So you're going to need an Amazon seller account. How do you get an Amazon seller account? you're going to need to either have um, a UTR number from being self-employed or have a company reference number set up a limited company. Mm -hmm. And we will help you navigate through whichever yeah. um, whichever route you want to take um, and then help you get your Amazon seller account set up. So you've got, you, you let's say you're raring to go now. We've got all the product leads. These could be um, online um, or in store. Break it down store by store. You can go into Sainsbury's with a shopping list and be like, right, I've got to get this item, this item, this item, whatever. So we break it down super simple. Um, and then, so going back to the question, it was five hundred pounds, and and what am I? So then, how much can I make? Okay. And how so much time do I need? Time. If you've got five hundred pounds, you're probably going to struggle to spend more than three hours in a week. Okay. Like with five hundred pound, you you you're not going to consume a lot. a lot of your time. Okay. You could do five hundred pound in. 10 minutes of purchasing online on Amazon. Like it's, it depends what scale you want to take it to. So the, um, with 500 pounds, the, what you should be looking to make as an absolute minimum is 30% return on investment. So we set 30% as the benchmark. Mm -hmm. Now, should you be aiming for 30%? No, you should be aiming for anywhere from 40 to 100% um, return on investment. 100% profit. Yeah, you can do that easy. 100% investment. So you know, we've got products that like, think of the, um, the Murphy Richard stuff that was two pounds, so you you're making sixty pound profit on it. That's like what two thousand something percent 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 investment but, maybe. But then I think if it's that cheap, they're not selling it, so that means it's not moving. No, 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 no. It's price errors. Oh, it sells. Okay. We've got the data. Remember this. Yeah, yeah. We have the data that says that, that product sells two thousand times a month. So it's proven demand. Yes. Flipping you've got all the data. Everything is data backed, and this is where what, what we'll see it on our TikTok comments. Yeah, yeah, but you've not sold it, have you? You're gonna, you're gonna, they're gonna be dusty. Then we had it with our like electric blankets. Where you're gonna be sat on them till next Christmas. Yeah. Well, yeah. it literally says on that image, if you would have read five thousand times a month that sells, that's one hundred eighty times a day. If I'm sending twenty in, they're yeah. gonna be gone day one. Flip. But then there's other sellers you're competing yeah, with, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. But they so will sell out. On what, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you just depends on where you want to put yourself in that pricing hierarchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mad. I always think, imagine like a really weird product comes up, like, I don't know, tampons. Yeah. yeah. And you're in there clearing the shelves. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's going on? <laughs> people, we, we, people do it with like pregnancy tests. Really? Yeah, yeah. But um, because Boots put like pregnancy tests on super, super cheap. Um, um, I don't know, is, is it clear blue? I don't know why you'd know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, that. Um, and you can, yeah. Sell them, but that's what I said. Like the weird and wonderful stuff, nappy dispensers. Mad. You never thought you'd be able to. Yeah, do that, it's crazy. Okay, so I sign up to your Discord. Then um, get your Amazon seller account set up. Mm -hmm. Start looking for products. So you can choose: Do I want to look online? Do I want to buy them from in stores? And like I said, these will be pretty much every retail retail store across the UK. The, so we're talking Sainsbury's, Tesco, um, ASDA, Home Bargains, B and M, Argos, like every, loads get, of supermarkets. Yeah, loads, loads. 
and we'll so every single we we get out around about 20 products a day um so that's a split between online and in store mm -hmm. so we'll just be populating these channels on the discord all day yeah um as and when we find the deals so then you can walk in and say into sainsbury's with a shopping list and say right these 10 products have been posted in the past two days i'm going to go look and see how many i can find um, but then we'll also teach you how to sort of source your own products as well. So using that scanning tool, what mm -hmm. you need to be looking out for, how you need to read the data. Yeah. We have video tutorials and stuff like that. So yeah. we're not just coming in and being like, our leads are the only option. Yeah. We don't want that because we want you to also develop personally as well and actually the skill uh, yeah yeah and um, like why wouldn't we 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 want to see you make as much money as possible that's my main mission like i want to have a positive impact yeah, so yeah, we're yeah. going to help you do that yeah um and so can you drop any tips or gem just for, for this episode on finding your own products any like key tips you'd say to look for like price points size um or they just work just scanning as much as possible in terms of you'll what you'll do is you'll learn over time sort of what areas to be going to in shops and that will come from experience yeah because we get people that when they they'll be like right i've already downloaded seller ramp because i've seen it on your tiktoks but i can't find anything yeah uh and then that's when like right they need our help and then they can then once they sort of see what we're going for yeah. they'll go out on their own what i would say to start with um the main things is make sure that you are sort of like these are mistakes that i made when i was first starting uh so when you're looking at let's say you find a product and you're like oh this looks like a gem then what you can do is um you can look scroll down look at it and there might only be one one like fba seller on that listing now when i thought i was like yes there's only one person i'm in competition with here <laughs> what that turned out to be was like um the brand the itself. brand yeah so yeah. then issue an ip claim and then it fucks your account up well can yeah. fuck your account up yeah. and then you you, ba you basically can't sell the stock so that's something to watch out for yeah you need to know yeah. with like a platform like ours yeah. we will teach you how to use all this so actually spend the time because too many people jump in balls deep yeah, yeah. and then yeah. they're like all this shit hits the fan and then like, i hate this it's like you, you didn't you didn't just follow the steps yeah, like yeah, you yeah, just yeah. went yeah. straight into it 100 yeah. mile an hour mm -hmm. so then you're obviously gonna yeah make some mistakes so we'll teach you how to read everything it's also important to read um on like a 30 60 90 day price chart because if you open up a um let's say for some reason there's a price premium um on the buy box right now and let's say it's selling at 80 quid right now but if you go on a 60 90 180 day chart and it's actually selling at 40 quid and then you, and but you're buying at fifty to sell at eighty. Yeah. But then historically, it's always been down here. Yeah, yeah. You can fully expect that to come back down here. Yeah. And then you're going to lose money on it. So you need to know then. to actually read the data. Yeah. Um. One the the one store that I recommend everyone checks out, and we don't post many products on this store because I it's think always I know what you're going to say. Where? Is it Costco? No, no, no. All right. Not Costco. So um, this store is always store specific. Okay. Um, in terms of the section we're going to hit. So boots clearance section. Now this is like an absolute gold mine for what you can find. There is like we found products in there before for like two three pound that are selling for like sixty quid on Amazon. There's 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 you need to go and take advantage of this. Um, it's important to what as well though. Always remember to check the dates. Yeah, best yeah. before the yeah. use by dates because yeah. people mess up on that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, boots clearance is the one because we don't post any information on it because it's always store specific. Okay. So like. It would just waste our members' time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean specific? Um, so like, let's say if I find a gem of a product in one store, it's not going to be in the next store. Oh, okay. It's not nationwide. Based, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, every stock is going to be different. So it's worth going out, hitting that, and looking for whatever. Mad, you want. mad. And I really like the content you do with um, you actually do this and show people. Yeah, what's possible. yeah. We we try and break, and that's the thing. Like, you've always got them people are like, well, prove it or like, I'm like mate have you watched the video i like, <laughs> proved it like what else do you want like there's we we break it down as as simple as possible we try to show everyone because yeah, yeah. like i said with the these trading guys and stuff like they've made it so hard to acquire a customer so we yeah. break it down to the bare bones yeah and yeah hopefully it's user friendly yeah, um, yeah yeah but what i really like about what you guys have done as well is that i've done loads of courses on property forex whatever they give you the knowledge but they don't give you the opportunity yeah so it's like okay i know the knowledge of it but how do i actually find a property a rent to rent or yeah, yeah. the market opportunity but you're all providing both the knowledge and the opportunity Products. yeah yeah which is amazing yeah. it's just we, we just simply take the guesswork out of the game yeah yeah from start to finish yeah i feel like everyone should be doing it yeah it's, that's the thing is if you're like if you have anything about you you want that you want to sort of you've got any sort of motivation any sort of drive yeah 
to yeah. not only better your own life financially, I'm yeah. not going to say your, your life entirely because yeah, yeah. we're talking financially here. Yeah. And you want to positively impact your family, those around you. Start side hustle. 100%. This is one of the fastest ways to accumulate wealth. Not yeah. a get rich quick scheme, but one of the fastest ways to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice, good. Um, and then, did you make any money from Prime? Because that drink yes, went crazy. Yeah, yeah. So we've got. Um, have you have you seen the have you, have you seen anything that we've, we've picked up? No, I haven't seen that. Oh, let me see if I've got any photos. Prime is mad because I saw it was selling for like a hundred pounds. Yeah, something. I've got like eighty odd bottles crazy. in my living room. It's mad. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get one, but it was, it was too late. Uh. Let me see. I've got it somewhere, yeah. And I think also it shows the power of influence. Yeah. You know, this is, and that's what Mr. Beast touched on, where he was talking. I can't find this photo. That was that was one of our members anyway. That was a success. Yeah. Yeah. How much did he make off that? He'll probably do like, I think off that, he'll probably do like 300 quid, something like that. 300 pounds. Which is decent. Um, so, yeah, this is what Mr. Beast touched on, and I think it's super interesting. The, the the sort of what's happening right now is we're seeing a lot of brands enter the space that are all influencer led um yeah. created so you've got mr beast you've got prime you've got um happy dad with nelt bars you familiar with that yeah 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 um so the, you've got all of these brands What's, um charlie sloth's one the drink a vodka a vodka yeah so you've got all of these come through now these guys have a fan base a loyal fan base that a traditional sort of company let's say budweiser can't compete with they can't market in the same way that i always like with nelk boys with happy dad these guys have basically got a cult following mm. the same with mr beast if he says buy my chocolate everyone's buying that buying chocolate. even if it tastes like shit yeah <laughs> because it's mr beast it's same with prime yeah yeah, yeah. prime has been crazy it's like mad. and people don't and then people like with our tiktok that went viral everyone's in the comments like it doesn't even taste good but it didn't stop <laughs> everyone from running there in the first place just yeah. to get it yeah and it's sort of that Again, it comes back to that FOMO. It's fear of missing out, isn't it? And it's yeah, just because yeah, yeah. if it does sell out, then well, yeah, yeah. so they they run and go get it. Yeah. And the no other company can market like that in no. terms of like the traditional old moving companies like your Budweisers, um, like you know, the like, faceless brands, kind yeah. of. Yeah, like it's yeah. where so the the there's gonna I think that it's gonna be super interesting to see actually how big these companies go. Um, like especially especially like Mr. Beast with like he's Mad. he's already worth billions, isn't it? Or is he or is he nearly there? I think he got offered like four billion for his, his channels, YouTube. But yeah, was... and, and they said that was undervalued. Yeah. He, did, what did he say you consider? Do you remember? I think it was like twenty billion or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Like it's crazy. Yeah, it's because um... his influence you can't match that with a normal brand. <laughs> it's just different. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it is. It's fucked. It's mad. <laughs> but it's it's like it is. It's what it's what because of like sort of social media and YouTube has created, yeah, and yeah. it's like yeah, like we said. Yeah. It, they're gonna i think they're gonna shake up the space massively yeah, yeah um yeah. and we're gonna see more and more brands and people doing it from this sort of yeah online content creator space and i was gonna say i think there's a gem there like something that you did as well is you find someone with an audience or you create your own audience mm -hmm. to make sure that you're there's a personality behind your brand that people can sure. connect with exactly and that's it that's again going back to that that food thing i know that his followers were a cult like following and that's what you've got to identify if they trust him, as soon as, if they trust him, he trusts you. Yeah. By proxy, they're trusting you. Yeah. And then that's where the custom comes from. It's like you're borrowing his his, his audience, trust. his trust. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. So it's just it's just like a way that you've got to think about it, and yeah. again, like sort of think outside of the box when you come into if you, you you're looking to do a startup. Yeah. I seen it with um a guy that was launching a fashion company, like, and he was like. He was on the tube in London. He's like, you won't have heard of my brand, but you will have heard of it in 12 months time. And then <laughs> yeah. he's basically, what he's done is he had like, a, he was doing like guerrilla marketing, like a really unorthodox marketing around like Buckingham Palace was like, had just someone wearing his outfit, but just stood like, looked like really like scary. Like, and everyone was <laughs> yeah. then around taking pictures. So then it's basically just drawing attraction to stuff with like, yeah, through, like yeah. unorthodox marketing techniques yeah, because yeah. he's thinking outside the box. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I think a lot of people need to do. You don't just need to think, right. I'm gonna go get Geordie Shaw to advertise. Yeah, like, could people see right through that? Don't exactly, it like, doesn't work. It doesn't. Yeah. So, in terms of your story now, yep. um, what was like the biggest struggle that you had on the way up? Um, or was the, it all smooth? No. So there was, I'd say, from the actual start in the company, that was um, probably that was quite smooth for a while, but. It was actually probably on the lead up to starting the company where I actually went through my roughest phase, but this was still on my route of reselling myself, building up, building the foundations for this company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
as I mentioned, and I've never really touched on this before, so this is the first time I've ever done this. So when I was um, doing like bodybuilding, now uh, what my issue is, is I've got a super addictive personality and I will take everything to the extreme. I really, really struggle with sort of letting go. And it's it led me down like a very, very dark path, basically. Yeah, I ended yeah, yeah. up in my first year of university, like I, like I was like, probably I got, I got given like antidepressants, but I was anorexic as well. Wouldn't wow. eat. Um, I used to like punish myself by like not like let's say if I did bad in an in an exam, I would be like, right, you're not eating for two days. Wow. And for some reason, like I don't know what happened, yeah. and I don't know why it would happen, but it was like that element of my life was something that I was in control of at that time, and it was like I don't know what it was. I can't explain it. Yeah, and that's the thing now where like. Like sort of mental health is massive to me now because I I watched myself get into like a fucked up situation mm -hmm. and I didn't know what to do. I didn't yeah, know how yeah. to get out of it. Yeah. There was no like, I went to the fucking, the, the doctors and they were literally just like, take antidepressants. I was like, yeah, nah, that's what they do. no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. And then, so what I had to do to get myself out of that was sort of, and, and the reason I got that to that point as well is because when you would diet down for a, a competition, you have to get extremely, extremely lean. Mm. And, um, like it's unhealthy and you're only supposed to stay at that weight for like maybe two weeks max for a couple of shows back to back. I stayed at that for over 12 months, like because I couldn't let go of the physique. But what did I have to do? I would barely eat, like I said. Yeah. I remember like one night I um I was on a night out, like one of my first nights out at uni, came back and ate like a few biscuits. Like, this is gonna sound stupid, this. I ate a few biscuits when I was drunk and then didn't eat for two days after it as punishment yeah. to myself for eating biscuits. Wow. Like that is how like, yeah, how yeah. disciplined I can be in my head. It was like, yeah. not not eating now. Yeah, I wonder where that came from then, don't like know. that addictive person. I, I don't know, don't yeah. know. Um, but it's all, it's been a blessing and a curse. And the reason that it's been a blessing is because it allowed me, the, the, the way that I got out of this and got out of this mindset was taking that sort of relentless, like sort of drive Instead of putting it into my physique, putting it into business yeah, and making yeah. money. Yeah. yeah. And then, so what did that allow me to do? It, yeah. when, when I was like in my nine to five, I'll be working from like 6 a.m. to like 12 every day, like doing um, studying, aftermarket, um, working, and um, like like every so often, like maybe gym. Like 6 a.m. to midnight? Yeah. Wow. Like my, my schedule was fucked. Like, because I, I'd have to revise for my chartered accountancy. I'd have to work my nine to five. Then I'd have to build aftermarket and then like revise again later at night. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, I was in such a structured routine. But the, so what I had to do was I took that sort of shit outcome of being in that bad way mentally, like was fucked, but still used the, the maybe like the addictive personality. Yeah, 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 yeah. To channel it into business. And that was where I was like, so when I was going through that phase, I didn't actually give a fuck that I was like, I was just like, work, 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 because it's going to pay off. And I didn't have like any doubts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That, that, that sort of, I knew that I would be able to make it work one day. Yeah. And it was, I didn't second guess doing all the work at that time. Like a lot of people I think would um, be like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm getting home from a nine to five and I'm sitting on the couch. For me, that wasn't an option. Yeah. Like it was like, do everything you fucking can. Yeah. And the the one of the main things as well that made me sort of really... Um, really understand that, 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 that and get into that mindset was, so my uncle is super successful and I was at um, his birthday and he said to me like, Jack, what I want you to remember is this isn't a dress rehearsal. And that is the thing that I live by absolutely now. So what that means is it isn't a dress rehearsal. You only get one fucking go. Mm -hmm. Literally. One go. So why wouldn't you make it the best for yourself, your family? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. It's selfish if you don't. Yeah. Like, especially for your family, that's my view on it. But make it the best. Like you've got one chance, one go. So why not risk. do everything you can? Yeah. Because and that's it. It's and that's where like I was able to use that, use this addiction and just think, right, I'm going at everything. Yeah, and I'm yeah, not yeah. gonna give up. Yeah. And I'm gonna do everything I can. Yeah. And that's it and it worked. Yeah. And it yeah, it's led me to where I am today. But the sort of the going back to that of the sort of you only get one shot and all of that. It's something that I think people do need to like really have drilled into them. I think people, when I see people like too many people every day, like just, it seems to be like life's on easy mode. And I don't think you should always view life's on easy mode. Like you should always be challenging yourself every single day. Mm. And if it's not for yourself, do it for those around you. 
and find that motivation. Find whatever it is and find... Because if you, like, like you said, you want to uh, give back to your parents, mm-hmm. people should be doing it. If it's not for themselves, if they're thinking like, right, yeah. I'm happy like earning this in my nine to five, but my parents, like, they need they need help. Well, then get off your ass and do it. Like, you've got to do it. You've got to sort of start taking action. And that's what I'm big on. So 100%, man, that's really... Yeah, thanks for sharing that as well. And I feel like... um. Sometimes it's hard as, as men to share like the hard points as well. For sure, like, that's the first time I've ever touched on it on on a podcast. So that and yeah. like I've never never really told anyone about that. And but it's like for me, if if the 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 main thing that I do now that and this is why I think aftermarket's been successful is that if I can know that I'm having a positive impact on people, then my business is going to be successful. My mission is literally to have a positive impact on people. If I can leave the world knowing that other people have benefited from me being here, then yeah. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. And I already know that I've done that. Yeah. I've seen what we've done for people. Yeah. But if me talking about something like that helps anyone out there, yeah. because I'm out, I'm out the other side of it and I didn't think I ever would. Like yeah. I was like fucked at some point. Like, <laughs> like, and that's what I mean. Like guys, I wouldn't eat. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, and I would like punish myself all, all the time. But I bet your friends didn't know what you were going. For. No, 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 no. And yeah. but I isolated myself completely as well. Yeah. And like when I went to uni, I had pretty much no friends. And like I had my flatmates. I had a few mates in my first year. But then, as I started to get better, like a bit better mentally with it, got more friends. And like I'm gonna gonna go see one of them today. Yeah. The guy I'm seeing today is gonna be the first billionaire that I ever know. He's super successful. Is it? Yeah. yeah. What's, what's he doing? Uh, he works in asset management at the moment. But oh, he invests on we'll his own. Have to get him on, man. You will. He's a genius. He's gonna be the <laughs> smartest guy I've ever met. But. <laughs> Yeah, so I surround myself with people like him. Yeah, yeah. And this, again, goes back to your network. What I did was I surround myself, like, this guy is an absolute beast, like, business-wise. And in first year, he was working a full-time job uh, that was supposed to be for, you know, placement year at university. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was doing a placement year mm-hmm. in his first year of uni, which you're not supposed to be able to do to third year. Yeah. Because he's that fucking smart. <laughs> like, so like, I was I was making, I was like, hmm, that guy, I can learn from that Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. And that's what you've got to do, like, yeah. learn from people like that um, and surround yourself with people like that because then you'll it's only going to have a positive impact. And yeah, that's yeah. probably what helped me come out of it as well. Yeah. So going back to it, yeah, not not everyone would pick up on it. And you, you can hide that sort of stuff. But if anyone can be, sort of be have any positive from like hearing me talk about it and now seeing me out the other side, seeing me happy and seeing me doing well, then just know that that's possible for you as well. Like yeah, it is. True. Like I didn't think it would be at one point because yeah, I was yeah. so regimented, so disciplined and it's, it's fucked. And I remember as well, one of the worst things about this is, is that I remember someone that I know got anorexia a few, like when I was younger. And I said to my mom, I was like, that's stupid. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, just tell them to put some food in the mouth. And then it happens to me. <laughs> it's mad. Yeah. And, and it doesn't work like that. And like, that's what the thing is like, it's like, for me, it was like, and that was like another big realization, which is like, yeah, you don't yeah. actually realize what people are going through because I never used to think that, that, that whatever you want to call it was real. Yeah. And then it yeah. happened to me. Yeah. And it's like that sort of mental punishment. Yeah. But that's what I think. I think a lot of people that get sort of super successful, they're all a little bit, uh, there's, a, there's always a little bit of a screw loose in some way. And Do you that, know what? It's <laughs> mad because I'm seeing like, obviously I've only had a few guests, yeah, here, yeah. but I'm seeing the same trends. Mm-hmm. Like, People that are successful are like obsessive over yeah, yeah, for sure. their goals. Yeah. They have everyone's got an addictive personality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like they all they can think about is pushing forward their yeah. business. Yeah, yeah. It's mad. And that's yeah, and I guess there's there's you've got both sides of that. But again, one of the big uh, another super big message I think to do with sort of if you're thinking about starting your business or you've got a startup and you're going through shit because there's been lots of stuff that I've gone through as well throughout like because when I when I hit a million, like my mum said to me like fuck jack like think about everything you've gone through in the past two years there's been a lot of like personal like family stuff like yeah. a lot of health stuff and we've um like yeah been for basically a shitload yeah but what the important thing to remember is is that when you've got a business you've got something where every day you've got to get out of bed yeah you've got to work is that sound yeah, yeah. all right okay <laughs> so you've got to so when you've got your business every single day you've got responsibility if yeah. you're the top man you're the seat well, not CEO, but you're the, the, the guy at the top. <laughs> <laughs> so she always calls me CEO. Is it? <laughs> Your head's so, getting bigger. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever you are, if you're at the top, right, you've got that responsibility every single day. Yeah. So whatever you're going through in life, yeah, it's going to be hard, but you know that you actually, you've got to get up out of bed and do something. You can't just sit back and like, you've got responsibility. And if you hire people, you've, you've got employees, mm-hmm. you've got responsibility to them as well to drag yourself to work yeah. and actually make this shit work. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, I feel like anyone that's sort of, if you've got a business and you're going through shit, use that business as your motivation because use that as your thing to focus on and grow because like for me with a community and like what we've built, like if I've 
go away the whole thing falls apart so i had mm. to be there every day and it, yeah, that yeah. was a massive help for me when yeah. we were going through everything else yeah so use that business as like sort of your foundation to um sort of get you through anything mm -hmm. because you know you've got to be in that routine you've got to turn yeah, up you've yeah. got to act as if life's okay yeah and then when life eventually gets better yeah. like you'll you'll be thankful because your business will be accelerated and other. yeah because you've got something to focus yeah, on. yeah and also it's got to be more than just the money for it so like you're probably really driven about helping other people and getting them started in business. So exactly, that is it. And that's where it goes back to, like we're working with, um, I can't remember if I told you on this call, but so we're working with a charity that's going to help people that are sort of out of income. Mm. They, they may be that they're a caregiver yeah. and or they may have a disability. Yeah, yeah. They can't leave the home, something like that. Yeah. So I, And these people are people that are uh, in really bad situations. Mm -hmm. And so we're working with a charity now um, where we're going to help these people. Oh, that's really and good. yeah, and we're going to help them start earning money. And so the, anyone who says to me, like, we get it all the time, like, because like in our sort of industry, it, it could be notorious that like the group owners sit there and take all this money. <laughs> it's like, no, nah, that's not what's happening. Yeah. Like my, when, when we first started, I was money driven. Mm -hmm. Definitely not now. Yeah. And because after I've, what sort of happened when I started to see yeah. the business develop and see um, what it actually did for people, whether that be like, bro, like we went to like, um, like we've seen people weddings paid for. Like, and stuff like that. Like, I went to my man, my server manager's wedding. like, And I was like, I cried my eyes out when I was there. Because I was just like, because like, I was just like, his missus came over to me and was like, thanks so much for everything. Because I knew that like, I pretty much like, I'd put a lot towards that wedding, basically. From yeah, his, yeah, what he'd yeah. earned on the side from yeah, working yeah. for me. So it was like. And imagine that started from the Yeezy. You know, when you yeah, first started exactly. selling one little idea. Exactly. And so that's nice. it. So like, I help people have weddings. People move house. People buy cars. People do uh, pay for their car insurance. People pay for their driving lessons so the parents don't have to do it. Nice. Like, there's so much. And when you see that positive impact, that is what drives you forward. And I just want to keep doing that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. Even for us in our platform, we want to do the same. So we want to like help people that haven't found their opportunity yet. Because I feel like for me, I became, I didn't come, become depressed, but very demotivated. Like, I had yep. zero motivation because I had no goal. Yep. And I knew that I was destined for something bigger, but I couldn't find the opportunity. So that's why I wanted to meet people like yourselves that are bringing opportunities to aspiring yeah. entrepreneurs because it's yeah. not easy to find them. Yeah, And some people can be successful, they just haven't found their moment. Yeah, exactly. So, and it's, yeah, like I think what you said there is bang on. Yeah. So you've just got to, you've just got to stick at it. Yeah, yeah. Consistency. Cool. So um, just to wrap it up, if someone wants to get involved tomorrow, how can they reach out to you and what's the, the process of starting with yourself? Yep. Okay. So... Follow us on Instagram, aftermarket, arbitrage. Well, can you put some text on the screen? Because yeah, I bet they can't. Yeah. I bet they can't fucking know. So, yeah. uh, so aftermarket arbitrage. Um, and you can go onto our website, aftermarketarbitrage.com. Yeah. So from there, you can either sign up or you can book a call with me. Mm -hmm. So if you want to speak to me directly, learn a little bit more, nice. get on that calendar, book a call with me. I'll be happy to chat away all day. Oh, nice. And uh, so, yeah, that's free as well, by the way. Um, so book a call with us. And then if you want to sign up, you want to get started, you want to do Amazon, you want to do eBay reselling, you want yeah. to do whatever. Um, choose your membership package, pay, connect your Discord, get in the Discord, get straight to it, get start making some money. It's super simple when you come in. It's like yeah. for Amazon, it's like Amazon first steps, mm -hmm. and then it's set up limited company. Blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. It's all step by step. Yeah, yeah, super Perfect. simple. So get well, in, get making money. Nice. Thanks for coming, mate. Um, no yeah, worries. guys, check out Jack. Um, check out the aftermarket Amazon arbitrage. We'll put all the links below anyway. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the episode and I really think this is a good opportunity. I might even try it myself. So yeah, uh, make sure you follow the Instagram at venture underscore room and the TikTok at the venture room. Um, yeah, stay tuned. We'll see you on the next one.